Hi guys, John here from Optics Warehouse. So as you can see today, we've managed to get out in the field and give these two items here, both for being rangefinder binoculars by two top brands, a good testing. So obviously you may have seen quite a few review videos comparing these. So what we've done, we've actually come outside, give them a test at various ranges, coming literally from 50 meters, going right the way out to a thousand meters, just to see what they're like on comparison, ping rates, and obviously clarity and field of view. So let's start. We're gonna start with the Vortex. Obviously, these are the cheaper model out of the two. Display-wise, the actual image on there for where it brings up your range finding and your menu settings, when we first opened the box, I really wasn't overly impressed by it. Then went through the settings, found out it can make the brightness a bit better. Obviously, as you can see, it's quite a bright day today. And the start display was very, very difficult to see. Turn that up to the full brightness, it then became nice, clear, crisp, easy to use. And that doesn't matter whether you're on a dark background or whether you're on sort of green grass or even up towards um, a brightly lit background. Um, something like, for example, in the distance, we've got a, a thousand yard target out there on a white background and you could still see the numbers clearly on that. So with full brightness turned on, these do work very well. And once again, as I say, really easy to see. The ping on these, it's quite a slow, well, for me, it's quite a slow ping. Uh, press the button to range find and you, you're waiting a good second at least before you get any measurement and that's at any sort of range. Obviously the further you go out, it just takes that little bit longer. Uh, other than that, image quality, really nice clear image and that's all the way to the edge of the view. Got a huge diopter adjustment on this and obviously you've got your adjustment on the right eye for then setting, uh, seeing the information clear, being the display. And obviously you've got your focus in the middle here. All of the features on this do come together quite well to make a very nice usable rangefinder or rangefinder binoculars at a good price. Uh, glass pack that it comes with, once again, really nice, well thought out design there. Really comfortable, you don't really notice too much that you're wearing it and it's easy to access to get the binoculars in and out. So weight wise, they're quite a lightweight set. Obviously there's nothing in here apart from obviously your range finding and the good quality glass that you're getting for that image. So when we move on to the SIGs, they are gonna be that bit heavier, but you have got a lot more going on in them, but we'll get into that in a second. So when you're using these and you're setting up your eye cups there and getting that nice and comfortable, there's a huge adjustment range on these to get it right. And obviously the degrees of movement to have these fully closed to open right up. Once again, large range on that, so depending on your face shape and how far your eyes are apart or close together, you should find a setting that's comfortable for you. So just gonna move across now to the SIGs. So for me today, after testing these SIGs out, they definitely have superior image quality. The ping on these for your range finding is faster. It seems that bit more precise. We get a more accurate reading time and time again from this. It's not a huge amount between them on the accuracy, but it, for me personally, it just seems to, to ping that bit better and, as I say, that little bit more accurate. Fitment in the hand. Personally, I don't find much difference between them. They both feel comfortable. You're not going to drop them. They're nice and grippy, not going to slide out your fingers. Focus settings on them. Obviously, I prefer the SIG because of the knurling here and the way you've got the ridges. Just means your fingers sit nicely into there and you're not going to slip at all on there. So, another reason the SIGs then come another step up from the Vortex, you've got the BDX software in there. So obviously that means you've got your ballistic software that you can pair with an app, and obviously that will then really, really help you get them distances right and to dial in your MOA or mill without too much hassle and very, very quickly and accurately. Obviously I say field of view on these, they're very, very similar, but the image quality is, as I say, far superior on the SIG right the way out to the edges. It, it really does come into its own with it. If, they are more expensive, but as I say, there's a lot more going on. And especially if you're going to be entering into PRL or anywhere where you need a quick ping and you can just whack it straight into an app, it tells you where to aim and for you to adjust your scoping. Obviously, anything that makes that simpler has got to be worth that bit more money as long as it works well, which these SIGs do perfectly. So, round up out of the two. SIGs are definitely the way forwards for me. Obviously, if you've got that extra to spend, great. If not, and the ballistic software isn't something you're particularly interested in, you just want a good quality set of binoculars that back, back you up as a rangefinder as well, then there is nothing wrong with going with standard vortexes. So if there's anything you'd like to know or something you feel we've missed, please feel free to drop us an email or give us a call. 
Thanks for watching.